Let's see here. Everything I learned about archaeology states that this is the most important piece of archaeological technology I need. And because there's always Nazis around. Wait, that red light. Oh. Hello, folks. Welcome back. For I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And looks like I'm going to go on an adventure because guess what I did? I went to go see a movie again. This has been like the summer of movies. You've had Guardians of the Galaxy 3, good movie. Uh, Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, yeah. And dun da 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 dun da da dun da da dun da da dun da Indiana Jones, the last one. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Intriguing. Wait a second. You know, I guess that's why I have my little floppy hat on. The sun out of my eyes, off my neck. I have my archaeologist shirt on. And I got this on my movie ticket. And wait a second. You know what? Because this is an Indiana Jones review, I have to detail my trip to where I went. Hello folks, it is I, the one, the only, Hobo Tom. And I'm heading up to uh, Jacksonville. My throat's a little bit gravelly. Um, the one machine at work has not been working. So I've had to call people. But I am on my way up to Jacksonville to pick up a friend. You can tell I have the Mike and Ikes. Precious cargo. And I'm going to go see, or we are going to go see, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So therefore, enjoy this quick little map like they do in the Indiana Jones. But it's just going to have a map of Florida and a red line of me going somewhere. And I'll show you the movie theaters up in Jacksonville. I'll see you guys soon. Check out the map. Bye. That's right, it's not an Indiana Jones movie unless there's a map and the red line connecting places. So yep, I actually drove up to Jacksonville. I wanted to go visit a friend, take her out to the movies, and yep, Indiana Jones, that's the one movie. That seems pretty good. A um, couple little things about the movie theater I went to. So let's go to that B-roll footage. As you can tell by the red arrow, I've arrived at my destination. Now it's time to see what this movie theater looks like as compared to what I'm used to in Daytona Beach. Movies! Hey, where's the bar at? Where's the pizza place? Not quite the Cobb Luxury Theater, but I guess it's okay. Ooh, popcorn soda. We are all the way. Four to six, we need number three. Number three. <laughs> so what this theater looks like. But let's think back to our carnivorous fate when a caveman saw a mammoth and it was like, um, how would that taste? Oh, since then, what a journey it's been. And inside Zerorama, parade of 
meat friends. So we have to the be the ones who love their mutton. Egyptians, their pigeons. Even the Aztecs had deer in their kitchens. And now, as luck would have it, there's a brand new meat to the cat oh. from a delicious yes. new animal called the plant. <gasps> meat from a plant. And it's a Tinseltown theater. It's a, actually a really big theater. Yeah. Wow, it really is covering my eyes a lot. Eyes up a lot. Really shady. I'm gonna have it Aussie style. The one flap up. There you go. You can kind of tell a little bit better now. But yeah, if I do that, it covers my eyes. So yeah, it'll be up a little bit. Um, a really big theater. I'm. A, I think. I do remember going in there once before. I was kind of shocked. The one theater is actually two levels because you actually have the first level and then you actually have the elevator that can take you up. Uh, that's the super theater. I just wanted to go see a basic movie. I'm impressed. The fact that it's less than 10 bucks to go there for a matinee. Bravo. Bravo. Uh, good times. Uh, again, movie theater was huge. A couple of clips of that. Uh, the one thing I didn't like was the lighting in the theater. I kind of sat near the front. That's where she wanted to sit. So, yeah, you kind of had, like, the, the kind of emergency lights on. I like to be in the back towards an aisle. You're not like this the whole time. So, yeah. Um, so, let's start off this movie. Yeah. And by we, I mean... Family. Oh. Who wants Suvlaki? Agent Suvlaki. Anybody by the name of Suvlaki on this flight? Aristotle, what? I didn't know you were going to be here. What are you doing here? Again, classic Indiana Jones opening. Nazis, unfortunately, make the best villain for every movie. They're just universally accepted as being evil people. Um, that's why, as an archaeologist, you always need something like this, just in case you see some Nazis. Because they like artifacts for whatever reason. Uh, let's get to my review. Good movie. Uh, would I see it again? Maybe for the six bucks, six or seven dollars for Tuesday, yes. Um, it did feel like it got long. Again, opening train sequence, bravo. An ode to every Indiana Jones movie. Uh, then if we fast forward from World War II into the, what I'm guessing is the 1960s era. And what we found out is that Indiana Jones separated from his wife, Marion. Uh, his son went off to fight in the Vietnam War, I think. Because that was about that era. Um, got killed. That led to the separation. It was the day of the moon landing. Dr. Jones gives one of his final lectures. The students are just there like, uh. Then students will be on the TV. You have the astronauts. Again, living in New York. I always thought he lived in Chicago for some reason. And or England. He said so many different houses. How can he afford all that stuff on a professor's salary? Indeed. But, you know, with that uh, goes on. The daughter of his friend, his goddaughter. Um, I just remember her as Wombat. Kind of a nickname. Shows up once to Dial of Destiny. She is a hawker. She just wants to go on, go there, and she's the ultimate Tomb Raider, ironically. Um, instead of keeping things for a museum or scattered about his office, house, 
I don't know, living domicile somewhere. She wants to sell things. She wants the green baby. She wants it. She wants to be. She wants it to rain upon her every day. And dollar dollar bills, y'all. Um, I did like the music. It fit the theme. Again, fit the time period really good. Not, I forget. I don't think it was Fortunate Son, but it was at least from that era. Again, the Vietnam era had the best music. The Vietnam era had its own soundtrack. Uh, and I've heard that several places. So then, of course, she's she's getting shade. She wants the one piece that Indy hid from her father because her father was obsessed about it. Indy took it, hid it. And of course, there's always the bad guys, Nazis, that come out that come after that. Um, working with the U.S. government to get the Dial of Destiny because the one guy's like, "Yeah, I'll do anything for the money, and it all depends on which country pays me the most." And I know there was the captured German V1 rocket scientist that did come to America to help with the space program. So, in, in the truth. Um, Indiana Jones rides a horse again. He gets captured. Made captured by riding a horse. Old school knowledge. Very good. Uh, everyone else sells motorcycles and cars and vans. A uh, little racist, little uh, racism about how the one black bellhop served his country and then the Nazi says, Yeah, do you feel any better about that? And you're like, Whoa! So that's pretty good. Yeah, nice little, little jab in there. Little jab in there. Um, they go on their adventure then adventure. to look for the second half of the Dial of Destiny created by the great mathematician Archimedes. And of course, adventure ensues. We meet Antonia Banderas, who was the Spanish diver. I just realized that. I'm like, wait, the only person who could be Spanish would be Antonio Banderas. You have the big, oversized, bulky Nazi guy who drowns eventually. You have the kid. Um, everything in this movie was kind of a tribute to his past movies. Of course, you have short stuff from the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Again, he always has his female companion, which is kind of constant throughout the movies. Um, again, they killed off Shayla LaBeouf, which is the smartest thing they could do. Got rid of him. Uh, let's see here. You have the hat, the bullwhip, the outfit. Again, dressing up like a Nazi. All kind of odes to previous James Bonds. You have the, the, the eels, which aren't snakes, but yeah, you're ter still terrified of them. Have a plane sequence where he just looks at that propeller and he's like, yeah, I remember that propeller. Again, original Indiana Jones, The Lost Ark. Still one of the best movies ever. Um, yep, they go on their adventure. Again, the map comes out, red dot. Uh, Salim! We are the kings of the earth and sea. Yep, he's there. Always good to see actors from previous movies, especially the original ones. Uh, he's a cabbie in New York. Indy brought him to America. He has his own family now, which is pretty cool. Again, he goes to Tangiers, and Indiana says, Yeah, hey, I've been here before. I don't think that's anywhere near Tunis, though. Tunis. I want to say it's not near Casablanca. They do reference Casablanca as the main airport there. Makes sense for that time frame. Sounds about right. They fly to the Aegean Sea. Uh, the guy has the cure for the bends. It's like, hey, three minutes. That's that's the time limit. Then he's called bouncing. Who knows if that works or not. They have the old school fishing boat. I like that. Old school fishing gear. A uh, wombat gets enthralled with the, with the Greek sailors. For some reason, uh, bad guys show up, complete the dial, so in the end, um, uh, get the clue to where the second dial is, we go to where the second half of the dial is in 
mainland Greece, the era of Dionysus. A whole adventure ensues to find that. Again, very, very Goonies esque. Then, of course, bad guys get the whole thing. Says his plan. It's like, yes! Going to go and end Hitler. I'm going to go assassinate Hitler because Hitler was the one that screwed up the war. Uh, without Hitler, Germany would have won. Historians, you could. Is there some truth? Yes. He said Hitler was doing not the right tactical things. I think in the military history class I took way back in college, that was a big argument. Um, if the assassinations on, on attempts on Hitler worked, would the Nazis have surrendered, keeping Germany, or fought the old trench warfare style to a stalemate versus doing things that Hitler, and I think history proven were not tactically sound. But if you're a mil his military historian, you know a lot more. Of, you know a lot more about that than I do. I kind of know the basics from my education. So yeah, he's he, he uh, again. He was the one that designed the German the German V1 rocket. He's gonna go back in time. Unfortunately, the Dial of Destiny took him back. Yes, to Sicily, but it was Sicily. I'm gonna get my time frames wrong. I'll say it was. Archimedes and the Romans. Fall of the Greeks were three, four hundred BC. Again, don't quote me on that. But yeah, I knew it was when the Romans invaded Sicily at the Battle of Syracuse. So it had to be roughly that time frame don't quote me and just feel free to bash me on comments as far as my historical facts go i know the roman empire came about 400 ish bc the greeks fell 300 bc so yeah to say somewhere in that time frame Sounds about right for Archimedes, a Greek, to meet the Romans. Not exactly sure. Don't, don't quote me. I know it's generally that time frame, roughly. There's still the Library of Alexandria that wasn't burnt yet. It's close, but yeah, you see this. Nazi painted bomber flying over the ancient battle of Syracuse with Roman triremes, uh, Greek fire catapults, and yeah, that's, the airplane was probably historically correct. Airplanes were not necessarily back in the day, not necessarily the safest thing, uh, especially bombers. They were meant to be as light as possible so they could carry the most bombs as possible, not necessarily meant to take a shot. Especially if it's a if it's like the perfect shot. I mean, arrows did pierce armor, or it had the ability to, depending on the armor and the arrow type. That's historically proven. So to see some big arrow go through, and it's, it has some proper name, Zyphois, something like that. It's a spring wound. It's just an oversized um, crossbow that uses like a spear. So, could it go through an airplane? Of that time period, probably yes. Because remember, you don't know about titanium yet. And from accounts from World War II, like to repair old, to repair airplanes, like mechanics used to use like beer cans. So you're using your Budweiser can to fix a hole in an airplane. Yeah, a spear could go through that. If Mean Joe Green can, can crush a can against his head, that spear is going through that. But yeah, um, so then the plane crashes. Everyone thinks it's a dragon for the other side. 
because of on the tomb of Archimedes there's a phoenix with a propeller on it and he's holding a timepiece and watches weren't supposed to be invented for like uh, like a thousand plus years I forget the exact time watches were in the timepiece was invented I know they had the sailing clocks in the 15, 1600s to help with longitude, I think. Um, so for there to be timepieces, especially for rich and famous people around 1000, not more so probably the 12th. 13th or 14th in the Renaissance. But yeah, they had some pretty intri intricate stuff back then. So yeah, who knows. Now getting back. Um, plane crashes. Indy jumps out with a parachute. He meets Archimedes. He wants to say. Wombat says no. Knocks out Indiana Jones. Brings him back. He gets reunited with Marion. Aww. And she goes off. Leaves him with the Dial of Destiny. And she's happy. With the kid, I guess, um, street urchin from Tangiers, and dun, 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 dun. overall, it got long, a little bit in the middle, and I'm leaving out like some filler things, but yeah, good movie, solid movie, I would definitely recommend it. It's a good. So I can see it as a good date movie, a good family movie. I mean, Nazis are universally accepted as evil, so to have Indiana Jones fighting Nazis is like, 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 like that's his whole enemy. Indiana Jones' only enemy might as well be the Nazis. That's terrible that I've said that Nazis so often in this video. It's probably someone, oh yeah, he's pro Nazis. It's like, no, Nazis are universally accepted as evil, and the universal bad guy. Even in video games and everything else. Although if you say undead Nazi squirrels, it does kind of make you chuckle. So, overall, what would I give this movie? I'd give this movie a cheeseburger rating. Other than that, um, so that was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. At least I remember this movie's subtitle versus forgetting what the ones in Transformer was or getting it confused every so often. So that's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Good movie. Solid date night movie. Solid family movie. You're not doing anything else. Go see that movie. I think the next movie I want to see is in November, and that's Dune Part 2. Oh, that's going to be so good. So yeah, if you have any qualms, leave your comments in the comments section. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. And I do appreciate it. I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos from the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. I think my 4th of July celebration got 91 views, which is amazing for a non-live wrestling event video. Thank you guys. You know what? Everyone out there in YouTube land, thank you. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy to have all the kind people out there in YouTube land as viewers. Other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching.